welcome to Substation 33, where we'll teach you to take this and turn it into a 3D printer. Let's get started. So, next we're going to put the, we're going to wire up the Y end stop. And we're just uh, going to actually measure the length of the wire again. Now, for this one, I'm going to run the wire uh, from underneath, so we're not going to curl it around. So we've got the wire sort of the right length on this end. Uh, so you don't want it really tight. So we're going to run it reasonably slack. We're going to come up here, and we've got to hit these pins up here. So we want to sort of have it loop around, give it us a little bit of extra length. And it's probably approximately about that length. So it's fairly rough cut. And we've sort of got to get it reasonably right, because once you solder the pins on, you can't change it so easily. So why are you want three splits like what's, what's oh, just to just to keep the I mean you don't want the wires taut at any time. So why? when they're taut it's and you bump a cable, you pull the pins off the headers and stuff. So yeah, it's a good question actually. So I'll just unravel that slightly. Got our our wire stripper set up. You can use again you can use um, side cutters if you want, but the ones that I had yesterday weren't really working too well. We're going to strip again just about three mils off, just a tiny amount. We're only just going to solder onto the ends of those crimps. Twist those up. Snap off a couple of your JST crimps. One at a time. Grab some long nose pliers. Now we're going to curl those ends again, just get it ready to insert the wire. So hopefully we get that in shot. Just going to close those up so it'll be ready to crush up into the wire. So then we're going to hold that in our little little holder here, put one of the wires in it. And then it's going to close that up. And it only has to be closed enough just to hold it while it's solder. It doesn't have to be crushed really aggressively. No. So we're ready to solder now. And again, we're just going to use a very tiny amount of solder. I've heated this one to around 400 degrees. So we're going to do a very, very short, short solder. You don't want, again, you don't want to put too much solder on here or too much heat um, and allow the solder to flow up into the barrel of the connector. That'll be wrong. So we're going to just a very, very quick soldering job there. Because if the solder runs up into the barrel, the connector is pressed in. You won't be able to plug it into anything, right? Correct. Yeah. So that'll it'll lock the. You won't be able to get it onto, onto the pin. Yeah. So we can test that too while we've got a pin handy here. So I'll just plug that in before we heat shrink it. You can see it inserts all the way to the end of the pin. And Peter, who's sitting with me, has actually mentioned too. If the pin, if this is gets gets too loose, what you can actually do is grab your long nose pliers. Sometimes if you've inserted these too many times or sometimes they're just a little bit loose anyway, you can grab your long nose pliers and just give it a little bit of a tweak, just a little bit of a crush, just to make it sit tight on that pin. And again, be very careful not to crush it too much, obviously, otherwise you won't, you know, you have no chance getting it on there. So we're going to do the other connector now. It's a very fiddly job, but again, for most people find this easier than actually using the crimping tool.
and again you can test that. Let's try and serve that onto a pin. We can just use any pin for testing. And then put some heat shrink on it. So again, two mil heat shrink is fine. This is actually closer to the three. Probably a good 15 millimeters there. Heat shrink. Going to cover the. You only need to cover the insulation. So you don't want any metal exposed. So the heat shrink needs to come up nearly to the end of the connector and it needs to obviously cover the copper, copper wire. ready to plug in. So just make sure it's not tangled with any other wires. And we'll clean the game. We're going to put the cable management in later, so don't be too fussy with that at the moment. So um, we're going to plug it into the wiring stop, which is actually on this set of headers here. The first two, two pins are for the X, X minimum and X maximum and then Y minimum and Y maximum. So we're going to go on Y minimum. The first the two pins on the outside. The top pin here, this top row of pins are all the signal wires. The next row of pins is, are the ground wires, and the next row of pins are the five volt wires, which five volt pins, which we don't typically use. So we only typically use the signal and the ground. So we're going to, the switch will actually just ground out the signal wire. The signal's got uh, pull up resistors on it. So we're going to plug one wire into the signal. It doesn't matter which way around it is. It's simply just a switch. So it's going to be an open flow switch. And then the second one onto the ground board at the middle pin. So the outside pin and the center pin. And that's your Y set up. So we're actually now ready to start programming up the, the Mega 2560. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.